Agonists, these substances bind and activate receptors, triggering a biological response. Think of them as the key that turns the lock and causes something to happen. Agonists have two key properties, affinity, which can bind to the receptor, and intrinsic activity, which can activate the receptor. Full agonists are like a perfect key, they unlock the receptor completely and produce the maximum possible response. Antagonists, these substances bind to receptors but don't activate them. Instead, they block the action of agonists, preventing them from binding and triggering a response. Imagine them as a key that fits in the lock but doesn't turn and also prevents the real key from entering. Antagonists have an affinity for the receptor they can bind but have no intrinsic activity. They can't activate it. They can be competitive, binding reversibly, so enough agonists can displace them, or irreversible, binding tightly, making the blockade longer lasting. Partial agonists, these are a bit of a hybrid. They do bind to and activate receptors, but they produce a smaller response than a full agonist, even when all receptors are occupied. They have both affinity and submaximal intrinsic activity. Because they occupy the receptor, they can also act as antagonists in the presence of a full agonist, effectively reducing the overall response. Inverse agonists, these substances bind to receptors and produce an effect that is opposite to the effect of a typical agonist. This is possible when the receptor has some activity on its own, even without anything bound to it, called constitutive activity. Inverse agonists have affinity and intrinsic activity with a minus sign, they decrease the baseline activity of the receptor. They can be full, producing the maximum opposite effect, or partial, producing a smaller opposite effect.